Hello and welcome to our webinar titled Understanding the Nature of a Log and Timber Home Package. I would like to thank Timberhaven Log and Timber Homes for sponsoring this workshop alongside the Log and Timber Home Show. Our speaker for this evening is Brad Mercer, National Sales Manager at Timberhaven. Brad has served the log and timber home industry for over 19 years and has led Timberhaven's sales network as he provides stellar customer service and expertly assists new homeowners with design, pricing, material selections, and coordination of all aspects of their new log or timber home. Brad, I'll let you take it from here. everybody's time and know how busy everybody is but uh, thanks for carving out some time to spend with us well tonight we're going to delve into as Taylor mentioned understanding the nature of a log and timber home package and uh, hopefully by the end of the presentation we'll arm you with some information some questions some good tips tips and tricks that will help your buying process go smoothly for you and you'll feel like you're in control of it and uh, that's really the preferred way that we would like to see that happen for you. So we're, we're going to talk a little bit about what materials are going to be needed for your log and timber home package and your project. We'll talk about how packages can vary from manufacturer to manufacturer and towards the end of the presentation I'll give you some suggestions as to how to request a quote for your log or timber home. Hopefully that'll be helpful for you. You might ask why this is important. And uh, when it comes to customer expectations, one of the things that we've found that it's probably the single most confusing aspect of buying a log home is understanding what all is included, why there's so many differences, and hopefully I'll be able to clear some of those things up for you uh, throughout tonight's presentation. But we're finding that a lot of times customers, and I'm sure uh, a lot of you have attended log home shows in the past, and sometimes what happens is you're talking with so many different companies, each touting their own to be the best, uh, and that's expected to, to happen, of course. But um, sometimes what happens is you've heard so many different people talking, and by the time you leave that particular show, you might be more confused than when you came into the show. And we hope that that's not the case, but sometimes it can be. So one of the things that everybody wants is they want the best product for the best price. And what that boils down to is value. Everybody wants the best value, get the best for your, for your buck or for your dollars. And that, that's pretty reasonable expectation that we all share. Um, purchasing a log home versus a timber home or, or timber home versus a conventional home can be very confusing. Um, and when I say that, there's a lot of aspects that are involved with a timber home and a log home that you don't have when you're dealing with a conventionally built home. Uh, some of those would include, uh, if we're talking about a, a log home, the log size, the species, the profile, the joinery, types of fasteners, uh, different roof systems, and we're going to go through some of those uh, in a little more detail later on. One thing that if you haven't found out in your, your research, you will, um, that there are few standards. So in other words, the log home or the timber home industry doesn't require companies to supply a certain amount of product or a certain quality of product. So it can make it a little bit awkward to begin with, but what we wanna do ultimately is we wanna make sure that you're making a well-informed decision that you know what kinds of questions to ask so you can really get the answers that you're ultimately looking for. And the one thing that we always want to keep in mind and our number one goal is that we want to help reduce costly overruns. If you know what you're getting in your package, you know what you've paid for, you're not going to, at the end of the, the road, so to speak, find out that there were items in the package that you thought were in there that actually weren't part of that package. So knowing that up front will be very helpful for you. One of the things that we're, we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna break it down, I'm gonna give you three different criteria or three different items to keep in mind that will help this process hopefully go smoothly for you. The first one would be 
the quantity of materials. Uh, as I mentioned, there's no standards that are required, so companies can provide as much or as little that, as they want to based on their own particular situation. The next would be the quality of materials. And quite simply, that's easy to understand. Obviously, higher qual quality materials would typically be a higher price. So uh, we're going to talk about several examples of that later on uh, in the program. And I think it will help uh, underscore that point and help you under get a better understanding of that. And, and third, but not last, would be the services. Now, services aren't pretty to look at. There's no wow factor to services but we will talk about how important those are and point out some of the ones that uh, could be very helpful as you go through this process. Now, some people will ask, why do, you know, why do the material qualities vary from manufacturer to manufacturer? And quickly, in, in one word, it's risk. Um, I'll give you some examples of what I'm talking about. So from inventory issues, the more inventory that a a log or timber home manufacturers supply in their materials packages, they're assuming more risk. There's also cost associated with that. Um, and when we talk about that, as you can see here, here's a lot of windows and a lot of doors. It takes up a lot of room to store those when you're talking about many, many different customers' homes that you're working with. So obviously the next thing to think about would be the storage facilities that would be required in order to house those uh, that inventory. And obviously there's a, a price associated with that. And so that may be uh, another reason why some companies don't want to supply as much as some of the others. The next would be liability issues. Some examples of that would be certain caulking, certain sealants and things like that have a, a determined shelf life. And if not managed properly, that would be something that the manufacturer has to discard, has to discard and of course that, that liability is on them and that's going to come down to their cost. Um, windows and doors, as you're moving those around, those could become damaged as they are. Windows are made out of glass. Um, but as long as that is in the possession of the manufacturer, that liability is on their shoulders, not yours as the consumer. The next would be equipment. It stands the reason that as a manufacturer, the more materials they supply, they're getting those materials in from various vendors and they're loading those materials out, going out to you, the end user. So it's gonna take additional equipment and obviously there's a cost associated with this equipment. Uh, it's not inexpensive, it is definitely an investment and it's gonna take many, many pieces of equipment like this to run a successful company of any size. Um, of course, automation is big time today but the equipment is still going to have and require personnel in order to operate it as well as the, the business in general. And some companies just don't want to manage a sizable payroll, so they may limit the amount of materials that they supply in their log or timber home packages. I want to kind of switch gears here a little bit and uh, talk about some of the most common packages. Now, again, I mentioned at the top of the program that um, these packages are going to vary, but there are some, some basic similarities. I want to introduce you to that. And at, at the bare minimum, a log and timber package would be items that would be logs and timbers, depending on the style of home that you intend to build. Uh, having said that, you will not be able to purchase uh, these kinds of items at a local outlet, such as a Lowe's or a Home Depot or 84 Lumber or a local lumber yard. So at a minimum, these are the items that you would need to purchase from a log or a timber home manufacturer. Next would be the weather type package. And the weather type package would include items that would take the log and timber package and make it weather tight. Those items would be things like your your sheathing for your roof framing, uh, exterior doors, windows, shingles. So when you add the log and timber package along with the weather type package from the exterior, the home would look fairly complete. The next package would be the finished materials package. We would be talking about interior ceiling and wall finishes. You're talking about stairs, interior doors, decks, porches, insulation, things of that nature. If you added those three packages together, 
that would equal the most complete. That would be a combination of the three or four mentioned packages that I just uh, highlighted. Um, but keep in mind that you want to talk to, as you're talking with manufacturers, um, you want to know if you have flexibility. Can I buy just package A or package B, or am I, am I obligated to take everything? It's an important question to ask in case you want to make some different substitutions on some of the materials, whereas that particular manufacturer may not offer those in their, in their repertoire or their product portfolio. Now, in addition to the items that we just covered, there are going to be what I'm going to refer to as sub subcontractor materials, which generally are not supplied with a log and timber home package from a manufacturer. You may want to make note of these uh, because they, they will be important for you to remember at some point in time. So the first would be masonry. That could include your foundation. And for most people, that log or timber frame home is not going to com be complete without a beautiful fireplace. So some companies do offer it, but it's something that most companies, that would be something would not be included in their package. The next would be cabinetry and countertops. That would be both for the kitchen, could be in the laundry room, as well as bathroom vanities and things of that nature. Plumbing would be the next one. So we're talking about not only the rough end plumbing, but we're talking about the finished toilets, tubs, sinks, faucets, and items such as those. And next would be the electrical. Again, you're talking about the wiring, the panel boxes, uh, the switches, the outlets, and your finished lighting fixtures as well as your ceiling fans and items like that. Next would be heating and cooling, otherwise referred to as HVAC, if you're not familiar with that. Um, I get a lot of questions about, well, what kind of a system do you guys prefer or do we recommend? And, you know, it's, it's all over the place in terms of what options are available and what will work in a log or timber, home, uh, timber frame home. It could be radiant floor heating, it could be solar assisted, it could be electric baseboards, it could be geothermal, it could be natural gas, uh, it could be electric heat pumps, anything goes. You just want to look from a, a geographic standpoint what makes the most sense in your particular climate, what's going to be cost effective and what's going to fit into your budget as well. Additionally, finished floor coverings, you're talking about tile, hardwood, carpet, or a combination thereof, those are generally not going to be included in a manufacturer's uh, materials package. And then most of you are going to probably build, I don't want to say off the grid by any means, some of you may, may want to do so, but you're probably going to need a well and a septic as well as some excavation if you're not building in an area where you have uh, hookup opportunities for municipal water and sewer. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. And then last but certainly not least is going to be the labor that it's going to take to erect and assemble and complete the construction of your forever home. Uh, and that's going to be one of the big ticket items there. The labor is definitely going to be a, a big part of that uh, overall budget. I want to break into, we talked about the, the quality of materials. I'd like to drill down a little bit and kind of give you some examples. So I hope it will underscore my, the point that I'm trying to make and arm you with some information that you're really going to feel comfortable with when you're talking one-on-one -on -one with prospective manufacturers. Again, quality can affect the cost of a home dramatically, as we can all well imagine. And you want to be careful of vague language. And I don't say that to scare you in any, any way, shape, or form, but I think some of the next examples are going to help you understand that uh, more effectively. We'll start with some floor framing. Uh, these are examples of some of the common floor framing that you might find or what certainly some options that are available to you. Um, the first one here, the 2 by 8 would be considered in most areas of the country substandard. That would really not be something that you would want to have as a, as a first floor uh, option. Probably more common would be the second example here in the middle, the 2 by 10. Uh, that is a pretty common size for subfloor framing material. An upgrade to that would be a two by 12. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive, obviously, because it's more material, but it is going to give you more load and it's gonna give you uh, larger spans than the two aforementioned uh, options. Moving down to the lower left, the I-joist, that's a prefabbed um, 
product that comes out delivered to you, more lightweight. It will allow you to span larger spans as well. That's one of the benefits to it. And then the, the one in the middle on the bottom here is the truss joist. And you can see here how you've got some additional webbing. Now you're gonna get a lot more strength and a lot more ability to span that. The other benefit to this one is you can, through these voids here in the webbing, you can run electrical, you can run plumbing, things of that nature, and sometimes that is a very desired opportunity. And the last example is a glue lamb. And obviously you can see that the massive size of that, glue lambs can carry massive loads and give you a lot of clear spanning. So just understand when you're talking with a company and they say, well, yeah, we supply subfloor and floor framing, don't stop there, but say, what exactly are you providing? And think about the, not only the size, but also the species of the material that they're supplying for you. And I think that will serve you well. As we move on up, if you're going to have a second floor in your dream home design, here's an example. Certainly, we could use any of the aforementioned options from the previous slide to do a second floor. In this particular uh, photo, you can see that there are six by eight exposed beams. And these beams are exposed, as I mentioned, but they're also structural in nature. So they are supporting the full weight of the second floor. And in this particular application, you'll see the beautiful tongue and groove that's positioned here. So just imagine waking up every morning and seeing that beautiful ceiling. I think it's something that appeals to probably most of us that are, that are uh, here together tonight. When it comes to subfloor sheathing, there are lots of differences. And again, you wanna make sure to find out if the company supplies it. And if so, the next question for you would be, what exactly are you supplying? The first example here on the, on the left is a three quarter inch OSB sheathing. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the terminology of OSB, very simply, it stands for oriented strand bore. Uh, one of the things that's important about this, no matter what you get, would be that you would prefer and you would want to have this tongue and groove option. And the reason for that is that tongue is going to fit into the groove and it's going to help give you a sound floor that's not going to move and it's not going to be a squeaky floor as a result of that. So keep in mind that that is a, a very important element. Considered to be a step above the OSB would be a plywood sheathing. You can see how the different various plies are laminated here on this plywood. Again, the important tongue and groove system would be something that you wanna make sure you're getting. A step up from both of these is a product called Advantech. There are other manufacturers that have a different name for it, but basically it's a high density engineered wood and it, adds, um, it has added moisture resistant resin that's applied throughout the entire panel and it, it gives a superb fastening and holding power that really gives a good flat and a quiet floor. So you start with the floor and you work your way up. This is your forever home. So these kinds of components can be extremely important in the overall build of your, your home. The next example would be interior doors. And again, the first question that you need to ask is, do you supply interior doors in your packages? And if the answer is yes, then you wanna say, okay, what exactly am I getting? In the first example, you see the flush hollow core door, and I think we can probably all relate to those. They're not considered to be a, a high quality door. It is a door hat, however. They're, they're usually assembled with cheaper materials, thus resulting in a lesser quality, um, as opposed to the next example, which is a solid raised panel door. And obviously you can see just by a visual look, as to which one would be a higher quality. Uh, I think it's fairly obvious. And before I go to the next example, I would like to point out, you see the hardware here on the doors and obviously you're gonna need hardware on the doors. Um, it's not uncommon for a, a good size home to have 20 or 25 interior doors. So just the cost of the, the doors themselves could be a pretty substantial investment. But then think about the lock sets. And again, some companies do supply them, others don't. So if you've got to go and buy 25 interior lock sets because you thought that the company was supplying that, that could be one of those overruns that we talked about at the top of the program. So keep that in mind and make sure you're, you're fully aware of exactly what's being supplied for you. 
Now, the next material components certainly vary in quality dramatically. Every home needs them unless you live underground, and they will have a substantial effect on the cost of a, of a home. Anybody have an idea what we might be talking about next? Well, if you guessed exterior doors and windows, you were correct. And you can see here a picture of a beautiful home with expansive amounts of glass and windows. And obviously you can buy an inexpensive window, an off-brand, generic brand that will serve a purpose for a while and you'll definitely save money initially, but in the long run, it may cost you more money. So that's an area where a lot of clients want to put their money because they would prefer not to have to replace those windows. And, and your log or timber home are only as efficient as the windows and the roof systems and the walls themselves. So that can be a, a big dollar item that can make a big difference in the overall cost and look and performance of your home. Anderson Window is, is a popular name that most everybody is familiar with due to all their advertising. But some of the other things you want to think of, not just in terms of the quality, but when you're looking for various specialty types of windows, you want to make sure that the manufacturer is supplying you with a product that will suit and serve all the needs that you're looking for. And here's some of the, the ones that I'm talking about with trapezoid windows, custom glass. You can see the, the various ones that are there. So make sure you're getting what you want. I can tell you that some companies will provide windows. Other companies don't. Some will provide certain windows, but they may not provide the custom glass. So don't make the assumption. Make sure you're asking the questions and, and you know exactly what you're expecting to be included in that particular package. We'll move on to stairs. And for anybody that's lived in a two-story home, you're probably familiar with the conventional stair. It certainly serves the purpose. It's functional, but maybe not the, the high end that you may be looking for in your home. Maybe your design includes a spiral staircase. Find out if that's something that is supplied in the manufacturer's packages. Some companies supply stair components, others do not. So don't take that for granted. Continue to make that on your list of questions to ask. Now moving up, the next option is a very complimentary uh, offering. It goes well with log homes. It goes well with the timber frame homes, as you see here in this picture. And you're looking at a four by 12 stringer here along the wall, four by 12 treads here. They're massive, they're sturdy, they're so, so in keeping with a, a log or timber frame home that they, uh, they're, they're amazing. In some cases, some of our clients prefer not to have these open. So an extra riser can be added in here to close that gap. Uh, and it'll give it a, a different look as well, but still be a beautiful staircase. If you're looking for something a little bit more rustic, more of that Adirondack or Western style, uh, a half log stair may appeal to you. Certainly creates a, an amazing focal point that can be the showcase of the center of, of any, any home. Um, what you see here is you have the log stringers with the half log treads that are coped in there. You see the round rustic railings, the balusters, and then some of the support posts that go along with that. These are kind of a hand-hewn draw knife ver version, but there are other options available. But again, if that's something that you want in your home, make sure that the manufacturer you're talking to can supply it, or if not, you're gonna have to source that out from another resource. We'll move up now. We've built a beautiful home and now we gotta put a roof on it. So the next thing I wanna talk about is probably the most economical and the quickest way to get a roof onto any type of a house would be with a prefabbed truss. And some examples here, the upper left one is a flat truss. And what that means is you're gonna have a flat ceiling at the bottom of that truss. Uh, the next example to the right here, the scissor truss is gonna provide you with a cathedral ceiling, but it's not going to be like the outer roof pitch. So it'll be somewhat more subtle, but it'll still give you that, that airy feeling and more cubic uh, feet in a particular design. The uh, illustration on the bottom of the attic truss, obviously most of you are familiar with that. If you're looking for additional storage, this might be a good complimentary way to achieve that. Let's move on. We'll look at some con conventionally framed options. 
some companies may use a, a, a two by eight rafter, others may use a two by 10, others in this illustration is a two by 12. The thing to keep in mind there is that depending on where you're gonna be building, there are certain R values required for the insulation. And so for ex example, in a two by 12 conventional rafter like we see here, you can get a, an R38 rolled insulation in that cavity. And so the larger the cavity, the more insulation it can, it can acquire or it can, it can hold. Uh, let's take a look at a finished two by 12 rafter. Now in this particular case, you see it's got the beautiful tongue and groove. And you see that in this case, the client wanted to add a focal point and add this heavy truss here. This is referred to as a king post truss. And that's the king post here with extra webbing. And you see the, the beams going up. You see a collar tie here. And you see everything fastened with these gusset plates. <clears throat> so it really lends a, a sense of an industrial look, if you will. Another option would be a six by eight rafter. The difference between this one is that the six by eight beams, as you can see here in this shot, are both uh, visible, obviously, so they're exposed and they're also structural. And the spacing is going to be a little bit less than some others because you've got certain snow loads and things that you need to account for to support the, the, the roof loads there. Next would be a six by eight beam in Perlin. Uh, this happens to be a fairly popular choice. Uh, I can tell you here at, at, at Timberhaven. Um, let's take a look at how beautiful this, this is. And I think you would agree that that's a pretty stunning uh, system. And you could just sit there and look at it for hours and admire the, the, the technology, the craftsmanship, and just the beauty and the warmth that it provides. Some of you may, have, may be familiar with the terminology beam and purlin, but you may not really know what it stands for. So as you come from the top and the beam down, this is the beam that runs from the ridge down to the walls. The purlins are the members here that run parallel to the ridge and they're usually uh, knots so they fit over the beams. And then this one, as I mentioned, the other one is called a collar tie. And again, in this particular application, you can see that they're utilizing the gusset plates with hardware. Now these can be painted, they can be powder coated, any color you want. I think I've seen about every uh, option available. There's no right or no wrong, it's just really personal preference. This is an example of post and beam, and sometimes people are familiar with that uh, terminology. Other companies use that interchangeably along with uh, timber frame, but in this case, the distinction is that this heavy timber system is going to be fastened by either utilizing gusset plates and or mechanical fasteners. That would be opposed to this one that you see here, but this is an example of a timber frame, which uses the old time and tested method of a mortise and tenon joinery. And you might be able to see right here at the top of the rafters, you see these wooden pegs sticking out. And these are fastened by wooden pegs, not the mechanical fasteners. So that would really be the distinction of a timber frame. The picture that you just saw prior to this one, this happens to be the finished view. And I think you would all agree, what a beautiful, beautiful finished ceiling and trusts and rafters this, this, this makes. I mean, who wouldn't want to spend time there? I know I would. Okay, as we continue to move through this, roofing materials. Again, first question, and I know you're catching on by now, but it's gonna be, do you, Mr. Manufacturer, supply shingles? And if so, if the answer is yes, then the next question is, what exactly are you supplying and what's the name brand? Important to know. The first example that we see here on the left is a three tab or called a triple tab shingle. It's basically flat. It could be a 20 or 25 year shingle perhaps versus the uh, example we have on the right. This is considered or, or referred to as an architectural shingle. So you can see how it gives that 3D and that depth. It gives a little bit more interest, certainly more aesthetically pleasing. It would be considered an upgrade and a higher quality than the, the triple tab. Uh, and they can come in a 25, a 30, a 50 year shingle. So it's important to ask exactly what you're getting. Now for those of you, and I know there are probably a number of you in the audience that are looking to do a metal roof on your beautiful forever home, here's a great example of one. 
and certainly it's very complementary with either a timber frame, a hybrid home, or a log home. One thing to caution, and not to caution necessarily, but just as an informational fact, if you're talking about a high quality, good quality metal roof that has a good warranty, and I'll explain what I'm talking about, but a warranty that's going to be against chipping, fading, peeling on the finish. If it's a heavy gauge metal, and there's, there's various gauges of metal, so they're not all created equal. If you're looking to do a metal roof, just make sure that you're factoring in about three to four times the cost of a shingled roof when you go to establish your budgets. Uh, probably gonna be a one and done, but you're gonna pay to play on that initial investment. So just be prepared uh, when you're putting your numbers together. Now, when it comes to log walls, there are as many differences as there are similarities. So when you're comparing company to company, here's some things that you wanna keep in mind. Um, you know, the size of the log, what species of wood is being supplied in your logs? Uh, what standards are you using to grade those logs? What type of joinery is going to be utilized in order to put that house together? The corner assemblies here, you see a mortise and tenon corner here on the top example. On the bottom when you see what's referred to as a dovetail. And people say, well, which one's better? And really what I would, my answer typically is, it's really more about aesthetics than it is about performance. If you're dealing with a, you know, a good quality manufacturer, either are gonna perform very well. So a lot of it is just what you like the looks of better. Are you dealing with a company that, that cuts and does the pre-cutting? So everything is cut and ready to go when it's delivered to the job site. Other companies may provide random length logs and that's okay, but your builder needs to be prepared because they're going to be making those cuts with chainsaw out in the field and they're going to have to make everything fit. So it's important to know from a cost perspective, obviously pre-cut logs would cost more than random length logs, but in the long run, you're going to be adding labor for the, the random length logs in order to be cut properly. The number of log rows, in other words, how many log rows are you stacking? 13, 14, 15, 16. Obviously, if everything were equal, just the number of log rows themselves could have an impact on the cost difference. Are you looking at a kiln-dried product or an air-dried product? I wanna spend a minute here because this is, this is very important. There's no standards in the industry when it comes to kiln drying. So in other words, a company can say, we kiln dry our logs, and they could have the logs in a kiln for a day or so. But in order to get a truly kiln dried log, it's going to take much longer than that. Uh, and the, when I talk about a truly kiln dried log, if you're talking to manufacturers and they say, yes, we kiln dry, the key question here, and I would suggest that you write this down if this is important to you, is within your system, is there anything that is going to be like a screw jack or a through bolt? And if you're not familiar with that, those are items that will help adjust the log homes, the floors, the walls, and keep them tight. So if those are components that they do supply or are required in their packages, you know that it's not a truly kiln dried product. There will be adjustments for settling later on down the road. Are you talking about an engineered, a premium engineered laminated log, a solid log, log siding? So those are all things that are quality factors to keep in mind as you're going through your search. Now, when it comes to services, we've looked at a lot of beautiful things and with some wow factor. And now the services are kind of one of those things where uh, you don't think about them. So many times they're forgotten or they're ignored during the buying process because you're so focused on that, that design and the wow factor that you don't think about it. Uh, I can tell you that many are crucial in assuring that your buying and building process goes as smoothly as possible. And unfortunately, many times, some of our clients will assume that they're part of the kit, or if they're talking with one manufacturer and it's part of the kit, for another, it may be an option, it may be an extra, or it may not even be an available option to them. So make sure you're talking about some of the services. I'll drill down and give you a few, uh, few good illustrations of what I'm talking about. So local representatives. Having a local representative close by that can walk your property with you, that can meet with you to help position the house on the property, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they can review materials, quotes, and plans with you and help develop that design. 
if you're looking for them, they may know of some local land that's in the area that they're familiar with that could be available for you. Um, they can offer suggestions and options for arranging financing with maybe a local bank. Certainly locating a builder can be a big part of the uh, success of your home. So having somebody there locally that knows that local builder can be a huge benefit. And then the other thing, as we talked about before, they may know of some subcontractors or some different uh, companies that could provide some of the sub subcontractor items that are not typically included in most log home packages. I don't know when I when I talk to audiences and I go to log home shows and I can see a show of hands, I often will pose the question, how many of you think you could identify every last component in a full complete log home package? And I can tell you I very rarely see anybody putting their hand up, which makes sense because there is a lot involved. And so having a professional, a skilled, experienced professional there with you on delivery day, biggest day of the project to date, when all the materials are delivered or at least part of them are delivered for your dream home. So having somebody there to walk you through that process, take a detailed inventory and, and make, you know, if, if there were any damages during shipping, they could go ahead and fill out the appropriate paperwork, or if items were missing, could send that paperwork in, and those materials would then be uh, forwarded on to you later. Before I move along with this slide, I don't know if anything stands out to you, but certainly the lady here in the red poncho, and I just want to let you all in on a little secret, just so you'll be prepared. It's going to rain on your delivery day. Okay, let's just no two two ways about it. It's going to rain, so just prepare for it. Uh, but in all honesty, I say that to say your delivery is going to take place rain or shine, whether there's snow on the ground, whether it's raining, what have you. So uh, a good experienced local representative can help get you prepared for that delivery day so that you are prepared no matter what the elements are. That can be very, very important. On-site technical assistance, I don't know if any of you are going to be building your own home, but if you were, having somebody out there to take a look, be there in person to help could be a very valuable service. For those of you that aren't looking to build your home, having an experienced, well-qualified technical or customer service uh, person that can help through any questions or any issues is a very, very valuable uh, service, I can tell you. Split deliveries, and you may say, well, why is that important? On a standard home about 2,000 square feet, you're probably going to have about four tractor trailer loads of material if you were to purchase a most complete package. And in some cases, you just don't have room on the job site. Some of the materials just simply don't need to be on the job site from the very beginning, like your finished materials, like doors and windows that will be installed towards the end of the project. So let your manufacturer keep those Keep them safe, keep them warm, keep them dry. And then as needed, your builder can go ahead and schedule delivery for the additional materials. Unfortunately, we need to think about um, vandalism, about theft, because in many cases, where you're gonna be building, you don't currently live. So there may not be somebody on site all the time. And so it's a, you know, find out if that's available, find out if you would have to pay additional for it, or if it's just a standard option that you'd be able to pursue. Here's some logs that are pre-sorted, pre-marked, as you can see here, covered and banded for secure shipping purposes um, versus random length. The beauty about this is as they're all marked and the way that these are stacked, your builder can work from the top of the bundle and work their way down and save a lot of labor and a lot of time by sorting through the logs on a job site to find a specific log. Now, I don't know how many of you have your plan in mind already, or you have kind of a plan that you like, but you're not sure you haven't quite finalized it. Most every manufacturer has homes and different plans that you can look at and work from. And for many of them, they're just a jumping off point for you to give you ideas. For others, they need to be a little less flexible. So you, you may want to talk about, can I make modifications? And if I make modifications, do I have to pay to make modifications? Or is it just a matter of if I make something that's going to be, say, a, enlarge the home a little bit, then obviously there's more materials. There would be an upcharge. 
but you're not paying to make a change per se. Now, for those of you who have a very unique plan in mind, it'd be important to ask that, you know, do you offer custom design services? And if the answer is yes, well, is there an additional fee for that? Uh, that would be very important. And a lot of what we do in the log and timber home falls under the term of custom design. So that could be a very important question to ask to any manufacturers that you're considering. Engineering services. Many companies don't offer stamped engineered plans, but I can tell you we are seeing as an industry that stamped plans are required more frequently in more places than ever before, and it's not going to change. It's going to probably increase without question. So find out if that's something that could be included in your package or if that's going to be up to you to go out and uh, have that done on your own. The next would be an energy calculation or referred to as a res check. And basically that refers to the efficiency of a log home or a timber frame home. And in many places, in many states, in many geographic locations, uh, there are more and more requests to have that done as well. So see if that's a service that your, your uh, manufacturer was able to provide for you. And obviously, you want to make sure that your package meets the local and regional codes. If it doesn't, it doesn't do you any good and you're going to have nothing but issues. So make sure that that is going to be something that your manufacturer will be sensitive to and take into consideration as they're doing the design and the materials takeoff and the engineering for. Now, requesting a, <clears throat> excuse me, a quote for your log timber frame home, the most common and confusing method is to go and talk to, especially at a show, Take your plans and talk to 12 different companies, and you're going to ask them to price out their standard materials package. And as you know now, there's a lot of differences between the companies. And so what's going to happen is you're going to get back a dozen quotes that vary in price by thirty to $100,000. And then you're going to be very confused. And how from there do you make a, a well-informed decision? Well, what we would suggest is that you narrow your selection of manufacturers down to two or three. And you may say, well, Brad, how am I gonna do that? Well, I'll give you a couple of suggestions. What do you like the looks of the best? If there's a particular roof system that you like and the company you're talking to doesn't offer it, then don't waste their time and don't waste your time, quite frankly. You're not gonna be happy with the end result, so that's a, a good way to go ahead and check them off your list. Be sure and check out the credentials of, of any company that you're talking about. You may find out a lot about it, and, and certainly before would be the time to do it as opposed to afterwards. See if you can tour homes that they've manufactured. That's always a good calling card to really walk in and see the quality and the details that a, that a company provides in their packages. And certainly visit the manufacturing facilities. I, I can't stress that enough. You're going to learn so much about a company. You're going to get a chance to meet the people that are going to make your dream home come true visit the facilities, see the attention to detail. Uh, I, I would encourage all of you to do that. Uh, it's, it's certainly well worth your time. Another way to, to narrow that down would be to check out the Log and Timber Homes Council. There are literally hundreds of companies out there. Um, there are 31 members of the National Association of Home Builders Log and Timber Homes Council. You can get the website there and check them out. Uh, it's if you're not familiar with that, I guess the analogy I would draw would be it's much like the good housekeeping seal of log home and timber homes. Um, you just can't buy your way in. There's a strict code of ethics and there's other criteria that every company has to meet in order to stay a, a member in good standing. So that may be another helpful way to narrow that down. So now that we've narrowed that down, you want to develop a specifications list of exactly what you want provided in that package. And again, you want to address the big three that we've been talking about all night, which would be quantity, quality, and services. You also want to make sure that you're submitting a sketch with as much detail as possible. Of course, you know, your, your representative can help you with this, but you want to think about overall dimensions, interior room dimensions, window and door sizes, locations, as much detail as you can possibly provide and if you can provide an elevation or a picture of the exterior, as the old adage goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. So it really helps your representative get a vision for what your end game is and what you're looking to, to build. Uh, so if you want a, a, a 
quality and spot on accurate quote or estimate. The more material specifications that you can do along with the details is going to ensure that you're going to have the, the most accurate quote to deal with. You're going to want to ask each manufacturer after they've provided you with this estimate, is there anything that you're you're varying from my specification sheet. So if you ask for Anderson Windows and they're, they're, they're supplying windows manufactured by company XYZ, you need to know that because it's not going to be what you are, are looking for. And what's going to happen when you get these quotes back, when you've made those specifications, you're now going to have some quotes that are going to be more closer to being what we refer to as apples to apples. And when you're comparing those, as you do that, your, your rep can help you compare between manufacturers. But what's going to happen is you're going to be able to determine then what is truly going to be the best value for your particular home. I would recommend starting early with your manufacturer choice. Uh, certainly 12 months is at minimum is not too early. Um, you want to make sure you're capturing all the design considerations and sometimes that takes a while. And uh, you know, this is your dream home, so make sure you give yourself the time to go through this process at a pace that's comfortable to you. That way it's going to help ensure that at the end of the project, you're going to be happy. Another word to the wise, a lot of times people will spend years talking with different manufacturers before they make their selection, but they'll make a very quick uh, decision when it comes to selecting a builder. So make sure you're doing your homework there as well. Um, the end result is only going to be as good as the builder that you select for your project. And one other word to the wise is always, always get everything in writing. And I don't say that to scare you, but if a company is willing to tell you something verbally, they should be willing to back that up in writing for you. So it's okay to ask. They would, you know, if that's the case, can I see that in writing? By all means, this is your project and you should be in control of it. So don't be afraid to ask. So there should be no buts about your dream home. So after this is all done and I talk to my clients, I'll say, so tell me, would there be anything you'd change? It's like, oh, I love my, my longer timber frame home, but, and I guess our goal, and it should be everybody's goal, is to eliminate the buts before the house is built. In this particular case, you can see a four poster bed. If you're going to have furniture that you know is coming into the house or antiques that are coming in or you're buying specialty furniture for your new home, make sure you're communicating that effectively to your representative. So if we would need to move a window over a little bit to avoid any complications or conflicts, those are the kinds of details. Again, this is your forever home. We want to get it just right. So we, we, want, we need to know as much information as we can to ensure that we're capturing those things for you. This next example. I think um, may put this point to a better illustration. You've got the 30 foot, 30 foot soaring ceiling in this great room of this beautiful log home. So your, your tendency is to go out and buy the tallest Christmas tree that you possibly can. Well, in this particular case, this client loved their home, but they did have a but in that they wished that they would have gone ahead and made sure that we did a double French door so they could get that huge tree in and out without the issues that you can see associated with this particular photo. In conclusion, don't get overwhelmed. I know there's a lot, I know we've covered a lot of ground, but don't get overwhelmed. You know, a good experienced representative is there to help you. And I guess the adage that I use is, you know, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time. So if they can break things down in small manageable bites, if you will, it's going to make things a lot easier for you. So lean on your representative. They can certainly have a huge impact on the overall process. Don't get discouraged. Again, there's going to be there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, there's going to be obstacles that you're going to overcome. It's part of it. So just be prepared for it. Don't get too high, don't get too low. You know, ultimately all good things take time and patience. And in the end, a custom log or timber frame home is definitely worth it. And I'd like to leave with you this one lasting thought for tonight. Imagine yourself sitting on your front porch of your beautiful log or your timber home. It's on a gorgeous fall afternoon. 
and you're enjoying all the magnificent colors that Mother Nature has on display for you, you remember back to this evening and you say, you know, Brad was right. A custom log or timber frame home was definitely worth it. So I thank you for being here. Um, if you have any questions and answers, I'm happy to, to take those. And uh, thank you again for joining us. Thank you for a great presentation, Brad. If you have any questions regarding this presentation or need more information about Timber Haven, please contact them today. Thank you.